Okay, hey, real fans. I've, uh, I was kind of surprised yesterday. I was watching a video, uh, one of these how-dos by a gentleman. I, I watched a lot of his videos, and this guy's really, really good. And, uh, but he was installing an MRC decoder into a locomotive, and he was really up on him. Kind of like me, he thought, well, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Actually, it's no better than the sliced bread he was getting, but it was about 60% of the cost. So comparing it to a Tsunami, for example, which are good, you know, a little bit pricey. Anyway, when he got it installed, he basically even used one of the options on it, which allows you to go to ACC1 and ACC2 and ground and install ditch lights on his locomotive, which is something I've done on one of them that I've modified. And then he was trying it out, powering it, and pretty soon the right ditch light burnout, and the left ditch light burnout. And he was really upset that this was happening because crappy decoders. I hate them. They're no good. Don't buy them. Blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not quite fair. For example, this locomotive is an Atlas Classic RS1. And I took the decoder out of it, which was this thing here. And as you can see, uh, it had these lights in it. Here's one of them right here. That's the gold. Like them. I have no idea what the voltage is. I know it's an LED. I don't know what these resistors are. They're not banded like the common ones you see so I have no idea if they're a 470 or what the heck they are but I do know that the power coming off my track is 12 volts but what's coming out of the decoder I have no idea so here's an MRC decoder the same as the one we're looking at a 1715 uh, and so it's just like this one right here has the eight point which I took off and put a just a, a harness lead on it so I could hot wire or hard wire into it. So I I tested both of these and to test them to make sure that they work before I started the modification, I no more than have to plug this eight point lead into this card, which is an old MRC card, or I'm sorry, an old Atlas card, that basically is just using the right the black and the red lead, so the right pickup, left pickup with a 70, 27 ohm resistor, and then I use see, uh, alligator clips to hook into the red and black wire, which gives me my 12 volts to this, and then I can test my decoder sound, I can test my lights, I can do whatever I want with it. So if I have a good decoder, and then I take the locomotive before I do anything, and I test it to make sure it's working right, because the last thing you want to do is just open these things up, throw them all together, and then nothing works, and you don't have any idea whether it's the decoder or the locomotive, and it just compounds your troubleshooting. So, not knowing what the voltage was coming off this thing, I used the voltmeter. And I took and touched the two wires coming off of, in this case, the white wire and the blue wire, uh, with it in forward, you see the green light, to see what it was doing. And I'm getting about 6 volts. Now, the decoder that came with it, again, has these resistors, and of course the lights were picked up off these two center ones here. And you can see the resistor feeds right into this one. This resistor feeds into that one. So I know that was 12 volts going to it, because there's nothing else on this card that would change that. I don't think. Anyway, I can see. So I know that that was coming off with 12 volts into this resistor. So I went ahead and used the voltmeter and hooked up to the blue wire and the white wire and I got a reading of 6 volts when I turned on the lights. So I thought, well, I know these lights don't work because I tried my 1.5 volt tester, which is nothing more than a 1.5 volt battery, and I just touched the wires to the wires on the lights, and if they come on nice and bright, then I got a 1.5 volt. I'm a happy camper, and I know what I'm dealing with. So what I did was I took a resistor, which is the same, that's why I've taken off another one. And I hooked it up to using these little clothespins just to hold it for a while. So you can see the resistor to the blue wire. The white wire is hooked up to the other lead. I know the red wire is the program wire. 
and when I hit the lights in forward, it works. When I turn it off, it works. So I know when I go back to forward, it works. It's quite bright, as you can see. And so I know this thing is running on somewhere between 6 and probably 3 volts. But I'm happy with it. I know it's safe. I'm not going to burn it out. Now, the other problem my friend had was he didn't like the sound. It was not loud like a tsunami decoder on another locomotive was, which was incredibly loud. But we work it, we worry about this uh, process where we want this to be prototypical. And some of these that they show on, on YouTube, uh, they are so loud that you would be able to stand next to those locomotives in real life. They would deafen you. And that's not what they do. So that was kind of a curt observation. However, I've had a couple of MRCs that didn't quite work as well as I would like. Uh, and I can't complain about any other decoders as of yet. I haven't used very many of them. But I think just a bad mouth MRC and say, hey, my lights burn out when you didn't test them and you basically tried to shove 12 volts down a 6-volt bulb, that's what you get. So if you don't do your homework, if you don't do a little bit of work to figure out what you're getting into, uh, <laughs> if you want to go by trial and error and keep replacing bulbs till you find one, knock yourself out. But it's a lot easier to maybe put a 1K resistor in line, and if it's really dim, then put in a 700-ohm resistor, then a 500, 400, until you get the brilliance you want. Now, these MRC decoders, too, have a program where you can adjust the brilliance of the light. I'm not sure all of them do it, but I do have a couple that do. So, read the instructions. You know, I, I know one, one person gave feedback on this bad review of the MRCs that he read over the shoulder of this guy because he had the instructions out on the table, kind of like I do over here, and basically said, hey, if you would have looked on page two, you would have seen where it tells you to make sure you get a resistor into this thing to protect the light, which is obviously something he didn't do. So, uh, maybe you need to. Now, again, you can use a lot of different ways. I like, for testing this type of decoder, where I don't have an 8-pin, I've got these little closed pins. I've drilled a hole in them, put a wire in them. They hook on. Then the leads, uh, the two ends. I've got a 27-ohm resistor on the one, and then on the common common positive, I've got basically, uh, I just went ahead and soldered on uh, a piece of a resistor to get a little bit thicker wire, and then use heat shrink to beef it up, and then I'll hook up alligator clips to it. So anyway, just, just a couple thoughts. Uh, I hope it helps somebody. Uh, but, you know, if you're in this hobby and going big time, you want to share some things, let's at least make sure we're sharing the right stuff. And if I've made a mistake here, I expect someone to get back to me and tell me, hey, that doesn't work. I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do you. So, but if this helps somebody, uh, if it saves a decoder, if it saves some time, uh, gets you a little bit of a leg up on a conversion. I've done 35 conversions so far, and there are, a lot of them are different, a lot of challenges to them. Uh, I've learned a lot. I still got a long ways to go. I appreciate the uh, how-tos that I get, especially from my friend that was bad-mouthing the MRCs. Uh, he's a tremendous source of information. Uh, uh, I think he just kind of lost track of where he's at for a second there. But he's going to come back. I know he is. So anyway, if this helped, good. If not, uh, let me know what I can do to help. I'm here to help if I can, and I'm always here to learn, too. So thanks for watching.